This is Sydney Furlonger. My name is Val Miles and Sydney was my uncle. Let's talk about Sydney. Sydney William Furlonger was born in the London borough of Lambeth on the 16th of June 1921 to Albert and Margaret. After leaving school at 16, Sydney joined the army. He served throughout the Second World War and beyond. He was stationed in Germany, North Africa and Singapore and sent his parents postcards from his tours. This is Nick. Nick was also in the army. Nick and Sydney were very close. When their leave coincided, Nick would stay over with Sydney in the family home in Morris Road in Brixton. My nan and granddad used to like Nick. He'd stay over upstairs in the bedroom next to my dad's workshop with Sydney. Sexual intimacy between two adult men was completely illegal in England at this time. Had the love between Nick and Sydney been discovered, they would have been dishonourably discharged from the army and faced harsh imprisonment. This probably explains why there are no pictures of Nick and Sydney together. Not one. Sydney loved the army. I mean, he really loved the army. He loved being an officer. He was a well-respected officer and was awarded the Africa Star in 1944, amongst other medals. After he left the army, Sydney returned to Brixton, living in the same house with his parents. Nick and Sydney were still visiting each other after the war. I don't know what happened to Nick. Maybe they had a lover's tiff or something. Sydney got a job in London working for a stationery supply printing company. We used to go to the Festival Hall to concerts. He used to record classical music for me. He loved classical music, something that nobody in the family liked. Uncle Sydney found it very difficult to settle into civilian life. He'd been an officer and a gentleman, and even in our lowly terraced house, he still behaved like that. Following some high profile cases, homosexuality between men was partially decriminalised in 1967. By 1970, both his parents were dead and Sydney had the Brixton home to himself. Not completely to himself. I went up there one day on the bus to meet him and he opened the front door and he was holding hands with a black guy and he introduced me to him as his boyfriend. I got chatting with him and he said, I'm married and I've got children, but they live in Africa. I don't know whether I want to go back to Africa because I'm quite happy here with Sydney. In 1971, up to a thousand people took part in a demonstration organised by the Campaign for Homosexual Equality. Sydney joined the campaign. He began writing letters. Campaigning began for an equal age of consent in 1976 and Sydney contributed to their Gay Rights Fund. In the late 1980s, Sydney was the victim of a hate crime. He was viciously assaulted for being gay. He decided it was time to leave London. He contacted his sister May in Uckfield, my mum, and asked if he could move in. My mother went to see him in hospital. He told her he'd tripped up the escalator, but he revealed to me that he got beaten up. She asked my dad if Sydney could come and live here. He said yes, but there was one condition. Sydney wasn't gay anymore. Sydney lived in the house opposite us for 20 years with my mum and dad. Sydney eventually moved into the Queen Alexandra Hospital home in Worthing. He was described by staff there as very popular and he made close friends with another resident called Michael. In his later days, he met Princess Alexandra when she was visiting the nursing home. On the 16th of August 2006, Sydney had a stroke, aged 85, and passed away. After Sydney died, I cleared out his room and found his stash of old papers, magazines and letters. 
Some of the papers were so rare that the British Library wanted them. I also found Sidney's collection of photographs, which he had never felt able to share with the family. My family had led me to believe that there was something unsavoury about my Uncle Sidney, something that shouldn't be talked about. 